Good morning, and welcome to University Baptist Church. Do you remember me? I'm Burt Montgomery, the pastor of UBC Starkville, and uh, hopefully most of you remember me. I've been on medical leave uh, since October, I believe, with the church and medical leave with the university since August, uh, trying to get over and get through long COVID. I hope you find this service refreshing. It's short, it's condensed, it's somewhat of a reflective service. You'll see uh, you'll hear from Sarah and Joe, and I think you'll see Sarah and me, uh, and Jensi. Uh, other than that, it's pretty short and sweet, so let me begin by just proclaiming for us, joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king, let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. For generations, people waited in the darkness. Hope. We light the candle for hope. In a fragile world, we light the candle for peace. The joy of our hearts is joy that comes from the Holy One. We light the candle of love, for love has come into the world. At Christmas, we celebrate the light of the world the glowing light is complete when Christ was born. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The light of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The moon is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to share a message, a Christmas meditation on the meaning of Christmas. I want to give you a heads up. You might want to have some tissues handy. I don't want you to be caught off guard. Christmas means not that, that God comes into this world to take us away from all the pain and suffering and eventually take us into some eternal glory, which I do believe happens, but Christmas means that rather than taking away all of our suffering and pain, that all eternity enters into our messiness, that enters into our world with its pain and suffering. The Christmas story itself is not always pretty. We'll talk about that in a moment. I'm going to share an earthy story that deals with sorrow and death as well as joy and life. I want to give you a heads up. So you're ready. But first, Jensi is going to read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Luke 2, 1 through 20, from the King James Version. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. 
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord, Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jensie, for reading Luke's Christmas story for us and for reading it from the King James Version. For many of us of a certain age, that carries special meaning for us because that's the way we heard it growing up. It's also the way we still hear it when it's recited by Linus every year on the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Luke's account of the Christmas story, Luke's account of the birth of Christ, reminds us that although we have made Christmas safe and sanitized, profitable and commercialized, with, and we have lit up plastic manger scenes and office parties and lights and ugly sweater co uh, contests and, and so on and so on, the actual birth of Jesus was not like any of that. God's coming into our world in flesh, blood, skin, and bone. It involves an insignificant, poor, unmarried couple who, who find shelter to give birth in a barn because nobody can be bothered enough to make room for them in an inn, let alone get them in a birthing suite. According to Luke's version, the first witnesses, the, the, the first celebrants of Christmas were not official, proper religious figures. They, they were not theologically trained scholars. They were not important dignitaries and local civic leaders. Instead, they were uncultured by the terms of the religious leaders and most of society. They were uncultured. They were uncouth. They were unclean hard-living shepherds who traveled from their fields to find this king of kings laying in a pile of straw with ticks and fleas and surrounded by animals in the presence of blood, placenta, dirt, and tears, and tears from incredible pain, <laughs> and lots and lots of um, pee and poop, animal and otherwise. <laughs> the Christmas story dares us to believe that the maker of heaven and earth, <laughs> God comes as one of us in the messiest of circumstances. In this world in which we experience great joy, 
in this world in which we are sometimes filled with complete terror, a world filled with injustice and cruelty and even death and dying, as well as beauty and song and laughter and joy and life. Luke's telling of the shepherds, specifically, always makes me think of my friend Dale and the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Now, some of you will know the Ozark Mountain Daredevils are a great band of long-haired rural Missouri hippies who had hits in the 1970s with Jackie Blue and If You Want to Get to Heaven. Dale and I, in fact, if if you know John Rawson, picture John Rawson. Uh, The Ozark Mountain Daredevils, John Rawson looks like he's an Ozark Mountain Daredevil. In fact, one of them, I think, looks just like John Rawson. Might be a kinfolk. John, let me know if you're kin to the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. He's from the Ozarks. Anyway, Dale and I bonded quickly over our love for the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Specifically, specifically a song from their debut album called Beauty in the River. Now, Beauty in the River is not a Christmas song, at least not in the traditional sense. It's not a Christmas song like Away in the Manger, Here Comes Santa Claus, Winter Wonderland, anything like that. It doesn't sing about snow and Rudolph or even the birth of Christ. Beauty in the River is a rousing, rural, foot-stomping, woodsy spiritual about laughing and crying, living and dying, and waking up from the dead. It's a great song any time of year. It's especially a great song at Easter. I believe that Johnny Hollis and friends sang it at UBC this past Easter Sunday. But for Dale, for my friend Dale, that song is especially meaningful at Christmas. Just as Mary, our scriptures tell us that Mary treasures the words of some wild and woolly shepherds and she ponders them deeply in her heart, So also Dale, especially every Christmas, treasures lyrics from the song Beauty in in the River, sung by some wild and woolly hippies. (laughs) He treasures them and he ponders them to this day deeply in his heart. There's another woman named Mary, not the one in our text. This woman named Mary met and married Dale, in 1979. They both loved the Daredevils. They both loved Beauty in the River so much, they had the lyrics to the song printed in their wedding program. And at their reception, Dale and his groomsmen sang it. He used to joke with Mary that since he sang at her wedding, he'd be happy to sing at her funeral too, if he ever had the chance. Unfortunately, that chance came far too soon. The day after Christmas, 2005, Mary was killed in a car wreck, along with their 23-year-old daughter, Moriah. The lyrics were printed in the funeral bulletin. And true to his word, Dale sang it, or at least attempted to, at her visitation. So every Christmas, you see, Dale stands in a river of tears, just as so many of us do who have lost significant members of our family or close friends during the Christmas season, some of us on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the day after Christmas. And we all join Dale standing in a river of tears because Christmas reminds us of the terrifying suddenness of death. Dale stands in that river. And he began singing of the eternal mystery of hope and beauty in the river, about waking up from the dead, and soon finds his foot stomping along with those common, undignified, long-haired, theologically untrained hippies from Missouri as they let loose on a song about life and death and God's creation in the only way they know how. Just as in today's text from Luke that Jensi read, some common, undignified, unclean, theologically untrained sheep herders 
spoke some words to a poor woman in a stinky barn while she nursed her baby. And then those sheep herders, according to Eugene Peterson's message translation, let loose. And they praised God in whatever way hardworking, hard-living, livestock-managing folks did in those days as they returned to their fields. Frederick Buechner writes of that scene in the manger with Mother Mary and the infant child, Jesus. It is resurrection and the life. It is the resurrection and the life that she holds in her arms. And it's the bitterness of death that he takes at her breast. Wherever you are today, whatever circumstances you're in, however joyous, however sorrowful, however mixture of both or however boring and mundane your life is at this moment, whatever your circumstances, I pray that this Christmas season you find Christ, the Christ child, born anew in all the most unglamorous messiness of your life, as well as it in the beauty and the joy. For he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. <laughs> May it be so. Wait a minute. May it be so? No, no, no. The Christmas message is that it is so. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill in
all our trials, he's born to be our friend. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine, oh, night, when Christ was born. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name for Thank you for joining us for this special Christmas service. Whatever day you're watching this, wherever you're watching it, I do believe that we are one in the Spirit, transcending time and space, that we are all together in the Spirit of God, celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that this service has been meaningful to you, that it's been refreshing and hopeful, honest, maybe a bit challenging for you. If you have any questions about UBC, about who we are, uh, about where we are and what we're doing, what the Holy Spirit is doing in our midst in Starkville, Mississippi, and far beyond, please visit our website, www.ubcstarkville.org. Take a look around. There's a place there to contact us if you'd like to send us a message as well. My co-pastor, Sarah Harrington-Jones, or I, or any one of our leaders will be able to get back to you as soon as we can. As we conclude this Christmas service, I wish to share with you this poem by Thomas H. Troger. I believe that's correct. The poem is titled, The Hands That First Held Mary's Child. The hands that first held Mary's child were hard, from working wood. From boards they sawed and planed and filed, and splinters they withstood. This day they gripped no tool of steel, they drove no iron nail, but cradled from the head to heel our Lord, newborn and frail. When Joseph marveled at the size of that small breathing frame and gazed upon those bright new eyes and spoke the infant's name, the angel's words he once had dreamed poured down from heaven's height 
and like a host of stars that beamed blessed earth with welcomed light. This child shall be Emmanuel, not God upon a throne, but God with us, Emmanuel, as close as blood and bone. The tiny form in Joseph's palms confirmed what he had heard, and from his heart rose hymns and psalms for heaven's human word. The tools which Joseph laid aside, a mob would later lift and use with anger, fear, and pride to crucify God's gift. Let us, O Lord, not only hold the child who's born today, but charged with faith, may we be bold to follow in his way. May you be filled with peace, hope, and joy this Christmas season. Amen.